how did you kind of come to this realization that control was going to be an integral part of your, your strategy for e-commerce? And, you know, who was selling products on the marketplace? Why did you feel like you needed it to, to get control? I, I guess a little bit of backstory there. I, I'd love to just help people understand that. Yep. It's a great question. Thanks, John. Um, so I'll start just by setting some context. I work for Atrium Innovations and what Atrium Innovations is, is it's a very large company, a global leader in the uh, development, manufacturing, commercialization of science-based uh, nutritional health products, dietary supplements. And for a company and for brands like us and our leading healthcare practitioner brand is called Pure Encapsulations. Um, brand integrity and reputation and relationships with our professional customers, doctors, are critical. Um, and for us, anything related to growth um, and strategy starts with our doctors, our healthcare practitioner channel. Um, we sell our products directly to healthcare professionals um, and we rely on them, most importantly, for uh, brand awareness and for growth. Um, and what we saw back, you know, eight to, to 10 years ago was a very significant problem with gray market distribution, specifically online um, and product diversion. Um, and this was really centered on Amazon, on the Amazon marketplace. And what was happening was it was damaging brand integrity, relationships with our doctors, um, the trust that those doctors had in us, the brand. Um, and we knew at the time we had to do something to protect our business and to protect the long-term sustainability and health of our, of our brands. Um, and, you know, what was happening was just poor representation of our brands, of our products online, um, implications on, uh, on regulatory, um, regulatory concerns with regards to how the products were being represented. And what it was doing, it was undermining our doctors' ability to sustain their clinics and their practices. And it was impacting the trust that consumers and doctors had on us, the brand. And so we implemented a system of control, which I think you know, we're gonna talk about a little bit later, but we really, through in doing that, recognize the importance that, um, and the positive impact that control has on uh, on, on a business and on your ability to grow via e-commerce, um, giving consumers and patients access, but also strengthening and maintaining very strong relationships with the customers that matter the most, which in our case were those healthcare professionals. I love that, Adam. Thanks so much. And, and man, there were a lot of really good nuggets in there that I'd love to kind of double click on. So specifically, I love this notion of like coming up for air, understanding the true landscape, understanding who are truly your best customers and your best ambassadors for the brand, your best partners really outside of the, the you know, e-commerce kind of space, I guess, and, and really getting into that. And, and so maybe, yeah, maybe I'll just kind of switch because really those were the distributors of your product, right? Those doctors. And it looks like, you know, e-commerce was kind of creating a lot of havoc right there, right? So, yeah, maybe, um, you know, from your perspective, Zach, you know, how does distribution, I guess, of products, both the theory of distribution as well as the actual practical applications fit into that story that Adam was just talking about? Yeah, no, thanks. John. Yeah, it's, uh, it fits really well because, you know, if we think about it, you know, from Adam's perspective or, or it could be another space, right? For him, it was um, um, doctors and physicians in a brick and mortar space, but it could be a retailer, right? It could be um, a boutique shop. There's, there's a lot of channels that today companies and brands are trying to get in front of consumers and sell a product. And so when we think about distribution, you know, at a higher level in the e-commerce world, we want the experience that a consumer has online to be just as good as it is in store, especially right now with coronavirus, right? And so when we think about distribution, if we don't have a control on that, the problem becomes, uh, you know, a brand can control what product the brick and mortar retailer gets, and then in essence can control what the consumer is getting. But when it comes to e-commerce, because it's a marketplace and there's a lot of sellers, they're getting inventory from multiple locations. 
that same control doesn't really exist in a traditional way. And so now you have consumers who could get, be getting a product from a, an authorized channel that the brand has agreed upon, or they could be getting it from someone who found inventory off the back of a truck is what we like to say, right? And so that inventory could be old, right? Or close to expired in, in Adam's case. And so the consumer's gonna get a bad experience. The packaging could be old and so it doesn't fit with your brand guidelines. I mean, there's a lot of things, the pricing could be off. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about where that consumer's experience on e-commerce would now be different than it is in store. And so without that control in your supply chain, which is what Borderless really focuses on, right? Shipping boxes in an authorized way for brands to consumers through e-commerce platforms. Um, without that, then you're just basically letting your consumers have multiple different experiences with the same, same product or same brand. And that is gonna lead to some disruption and, and an inability to hold value over time, to keep your brand loyal uh, and to make sure that consumers come back over and over again.